Hi, this is Chris from dashcamcentral.com.au and today we're just going to take you through the menu functions of the DOD LS475W. So, we'll just give you a quick look at the camera before we get into the menu functions. Um, this is the 2017 model. It's one of their uh, top models in the range and it uh, has the Sony Starbus image sensor for uh, really solid day and of course excellent night vision as well. So there's the front of the camera there with the lens, not too many features on the front and GPS unit on top which is standard with this camera. If we just roll it over to the top you can see you've got your USB over there on the right so that's a micro USB on this camera so that's for power supply and of course you can use uh, USB to mini uh, micro USB cable to plug into your computer for transferring files as well. Over on the left, you've got your power on and off button and your mode button. Just flipping it over on the end, that's where you pop your micro SD card into the camera. And this camera will take up to a 128 gigabyte micro SD, uh, which gives you about 12 or 13 hours of continuous recording. So we'll just flip over on the bottom. Nothing there except some information about the camera. Over on the other end, you've got your reset button, which all cameras have, and you've got your HDMI port, so you can plug this camera directly into a uh, compatible TV and just uh, watch straight off the camera onto the TV. Just rolling over to the back, and we'll just pop that camera down now. And you can see we've got six buttons on the back, and uh, they're the buttons you mainly use, obviously, to change your settings and get into your menu functions. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to power up the camera. So I'm going to pop a power supply in there. So that'll typically be your USB car charger or your uh, hardware kit if you want to use parking mode. And uh, we're just going to introduce some power. So you'll see what the camera will do, what it's supposed to do once it gets some power. It's in fact going to power up for us. And uh, it will start recording. So the first thing you'll see is down here. Uh, you've got the red flashing light that says yes I'm happily recording away and the recording time. We've got a flashing GPS here which says it hasn't yet picked up a GPS. We're doing this one in-house so it's not going to pick up a GPS signal today. That's telling us your microphone is on. Um, that's basically your, your EV. You've got your date and your time there. This one is defaulted first the first 2018 um, and you've got your time on the bottom of the screen. Up over on the right, uh, just saying that the, the small battery that's in this, which is only good for about 8 to 10 minutes, which is typical for dash cams, is, is charging. And it does have, in fact, an SD card. And this is just telling us the ISO sensitivity that it's running at. Um, so like most cameras, to get into your menu functions, you do need to stop the camera recording. But before we go and do that, we'll show you some of the few buttons that will work while the camera is recording. So down here on the bottom right, if you push that, you have stopped recording audio. So it tells you your microphone's off, so it's only going to record video. So we will flip that back on. Over on the top left, uh, we have a button. If we push that, it's telling you it's just taking a photo. So if you want to try and snap something, um, you can take a still photo. So not too many people use that. Down here on the bottom left, you have... Uh, your emergency record button, so if there's something that you want to keep and you want to lock that file and stop it from being overridden from your standard files, simply push that and you'll get a big lock button on there that tells you the file that's currently recording, that's that entire file, so whether it's 1, 3, 5 or 10 minutes, will be locked and it'll be placed into a read only or an RO file. Uh, onto your SD card. So as you traditionally cycle through, loop, record and record over the oldest file first, that file will be locked away. Just bear in mind that on DODs with locked files, the micro SD card partitions maximum 30% of your total storage to locked files. Once that fills up with locked files, it will in fact override the oldest locked files first. So if there is something uh, that you do want to keep, um, you just need to ensure that you get it out of the camera within a reasonable period of time. Don't leave it there for a few months because at some stage, if you get enough locked files, it will be overridden and disappear from your uh, files and your camera. You'll lose that video. Um, but generally speaking, that, that file should be locked down for quite some time. 
All right. As I said before, if we want to get into our menu functions, we do need to, of course, stop the camera from recording. That is your middle button here, which is your record button. So push that, and you will see that our red flashing light has disappeared, and you can see that we've stopped recording. So that gives us the functionality to go into our menu settings, and to do that, we can just push menu, and now you can see that it's brought in uh, menu functions for your video settings. And you can see that this is highlighted here for video. If we push that again, it will actually go into your system settings. So there are two separate menus, one for each of video and recording. So you do need to go into those separately because they're two separate menu functions. So we will start with your normal settings. To scroll through your settings, you just use your up and down arrows over on the right here. Scroll down, first one is of course date and time, and then your record button becomes your OK button. So if you want to have a look at that, in you go. And that's the opportunity for you to go in, set your date and time. Um, you know, providing you've got GPS switched on, there's no need to set your date and time because as soon as it picks up a satellite signal, it will update your date and time to your current date and time. You will need to make an adjustment for the location of Green Minute Time, wherever you are in the world, but I'll show you how to do that later on. What it does allow you to do, however, is if you just use your OK button just to scroll down to the month, you can actually change it to your own preference using your up and down arrow. So you can see we've got month, day, year. Um, some people you know, prefer day, month, year, as we do here in Australia. So you can see you've got day first now, month first, and year last. You can have year first, month, and day. So, of course, my preference is day, month, year. So we just set that, push OK, and move on. Down the next one, that is just the volume. So if we go in there, basically you've got on or off. So essentially that is just uh, your... Um, your tones, so whether it's going to buzz away at you every time you push a button. So we are just going to have that as set off. We'll go down to language. You see you've got a whole bunch of languages you can select through. Uh, we'll just scroll through them all there so you can have a quick look. And we'll go back and select English. Screensaver, so essentially we're going to take a look at that. You can set that to zero, so that's just the video is on all the time, or three, six, ten minutes. So if you set that to one of those times after that period, then your screensaver will come on and uh, it'll flip over to screensaver mode and won't display the video while you're driving. So if you don't like that disruption, you can always set your screensaver. So we're going to leave that in the off mode for now. Going down, you can see we've got the screen brightness, and just obviously that is the brightness of the screen. I've got that set to the mid range, so we'll leave that set. Flicker reduction, so this depends what part of your world in. So you can either have your flicker set at 50 hertz or 60 hertz. So in Australia, we set it at 50 hertz, so that gives you a reduced flicker destruction, uh, reduction when you're getting playback and with traffic lights and so forth. So just to set that. Uh, to the appropriate part of the world you're in, whether you have a preference for 50 hertz or 60 hertz. Format memory card, so this is something you should do quite regularly, depending how often you drive. Um, when you first uh, set up your camera, you do need to format your memory card in your camera. Uh, we also recommend that you format your memory card just to clean it up and stop you getting broken files or stop recordings down the track. Um, so every, as I said, one to three months, um, just take off any videos that you really want to keep and then format that memory card uh, just to make sure you don't have any issues. And uh, most any dash cam manufacturers do recommend you do that as well. So uh, Going down to factory reset, obviously that will just reset all of these settings that we're playing with back to factory. So if you're out there and your camera's not doing what it should be, if you've accidentally got a motion detection or something weird and it's giving you weird recordings, let's just come back to factory reset, start again. Go back to factory reset. Uh, get your camera up and running, make sure it's doing what it should, and then, then start fiddling with your your, um, your menu functions and your adjustments. So, last one, and this is the firmware version. So, this camera has been updated to February 2018 firmware, and that's just confirming which firmware that you're on. So, now we'll just move right across to your video recording menu. So, as you can see, we're over here on video. Again, use your down arrow. 
resolution, you've got two options, uh, both are FHD 1080p uh, with the Sony Starvis image sensor. This camera gives the option of 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second. Uh, I elect to stay with 60 frames, I just think that gives me the best round, all round image quality. Loop recording, so here you can set uh, just how long all of your video segments are. So you can have that off, we don't recommend that off because what will happen if it's set to off is your camera will just record one continuous file till it fills up your memory card and then it will stop, it will not loop record. So you do need to have it set to one, three or minute five, ten minute files. Um, most people set it to three. Uh, I drive a lot so I tend to set it to, to ten minute files and you've got uh, longer files to scroll through but far fewer files to look at. So set that to ten. Exposure values. If you're not really happy with the image quality or you're looking for better image quality at night or you can just just to charge, adjust your EV just to uh, see if you can get something that's a little bit happier for what, what you're using. Uh, record audio, that's the same as the, the audio button. Um, you can just basically turn your microphone on and off in your menu settings as you can while you're, while you're driving and recording. So we'll leave that on. Date stamp, this is just the option of on or off. So if it's on, you will get a date stamp on your video. So during playing back, you will have the date on there. You can, of course, switch that off if you want. Scrolling down, G sensor. So this is used basically for driving and if parking mode if you're hardwired uh, it's just setting the sensitivity we always recommend setting the sensitivity to low uh, because generally speaking G sensors are quite sensitive so if you set it to high you're going to get lock files over every speed hump every bump um, uh, but again you know you can play with that and set it to something that, that's comfortable and works for you Image rotation, well that's just a no-brainer, so essentially on or off, so with off it'll record the right way up, uh, if you decide to mount your camera upside down for whatever reason you can flick that to on and it'll record your image uh, upside down or the right way up depending on how you've orientated your camera. Okay, parking surveillance, so this camera of course has parking surveillance mode and with the new firmware 2018 Feb onwards you do have an improved parking mode you do of course need to hardwire your camera like any dash cam to use parking mode you need a permanent power supply and a hardwire kit but once you've got that installed and you want to use parking mode you now have a couple of options so basically you've got low bitrate low bitrate will record video the whole time but it does it in low bitrate because the car is stationary, it doesn't need to record super high quality uh, high bitrate videos, so it switches to low bitrate and basically gives you a lot longer recording time in low bitrate. If you don't want low bitrate, you can switch to time lapse and time lapse will basically take a whole bunch of still frames and put them together, so it's still not recording the whole time but taking a time lapse every second or so still image and it puts them all together so you end up with that, that fast forward but again uses a lot less memory card space and will give you a longer drawn out parking time mode so if, you, if you're leaving your car for two or three days and you still want that parking mode to run as long as possible uh, depending of course how long your hardware kit uh, will run before it cuts off the power you can go into time lapse mode or you can flip over to detect mode and in detect mode it will only record a video when it sees motion in the lens or it receives a g-shock so bump to the car if it sees something visible in the lens then it's going to record a file for you so in this case i'm just going to leave it off we can set that at a later stage iso stamp that's just that uh, little number that comes up in the top left uh, it's not really useful for anything unless you you just like to know at, at what iso the camera is recording at um, you know it's switch it on or off you know for, for my purposes i don't really need it so i'll switch it off set the time zone so this is where you can go in basically tell it where you are in the world so this allows for daylight savings and adjustments from green manage time and uh, different parts of the globe so you just need to go and tell your camera where you are and then once your gps hooks up to satellite set your local time it'll make that adjustment and make sure that you're on the local time so you can see I've got that set to Sydney because that's where we're located. Speed, of course, kilometres, miles per hour, again, depending what part of the world in, um, take your pick. 
path analysis so this is on or off essentially this is like a mini trip record and we won't show you this but it basically tells you how long you drove for um, gives you some some g-sensor information and uh, just tells you where you were, were how long how long you traveled for and um, average average speed time so there's a few little bits and it tells you that at the end so when you turn your ignition off you'll get a little uh, message comes up for about 10 sec seconds which gives you your path analysis so uh, we'll switch that on we'll see if it tells us anything at the end driver fatigue again I, I don't have a great deal of time for this one I, I don't necessarily recommend it it'll just give you an audible warning uh, after whatever time frame you set so you can set it for four hours, after four hours you're going to get an audible warning just to remind you that uh, you could be up for a, a break uh, or for driver fatigue. So we'll set that to four hours. GPS logging, again on or off, just depends whether you want the GPS data embedded on your video. So that gives you your speed and your location embedded on a video or if you want that uh, switched off. So we'll leave that on. Heads up display. That is not going to be printed on your windscreen, it just comes up on the screen of your video. So it is essentially will give you your speedo reading whilst you're driving. So we'll go and have a look at that. So And you're going to have it when it comes on 15 seconds, 1 minute, 3 minutes. So we'll leave that off. Speed warning, again, um, doesn't operate off any GPS locations or anything along those lines. It's not going to tell you where there's speed cameras. All it does is you manually set a particular speed that you don't want to go over and if you hit that speed uh, it will give you an auto warning so that you've gone above the relevant speed um, but it doesn't change with, with speed zones and so forth so it's only if you're on a really long trip fixed to a certain limit or um, you want to make sure that you're, you're not going to go over 120 because that's the maximum for your, your country or so forth it's uh, the only time you would have a, a particular use for that Speed stamp, again that's just whether you want the speed stamp on or off your video playback. When you play back your video, do you want your speed being displayed or not? Plate stamp, again you've got the opportunity to put your number plate in there and uh, that will be embedded on your video. Password settings, you can set a password for this camera. Um, up to you whether you do or you don't. Uh, I choose not to. I don't see any particular re reason to have a password in there. I, I don't necessarily think somebody's going to hop in my car and try and, and fiddle with it. It's just as easy if they want to steal the camera and or the video card. Uh, I think password setting is more of a hindrance. Um, but you can go in, set a password if you want. Which locks the camera out so you can you're the only one that can access and change settings. Traffic camera alert. So this is in fact a type of GPS style camera alert so i.e. it will warn you where there is fixed speed cameras, red light cameras, school zones etc. Again for Australia I don't recommend you use it um, the, the information provided comes from here maps and isn't necessarily as accurate as, as I think it could be uh, I think it's more of an annoyance, but again, it's optional as to whether, as a user, you think it adds any value or not. So I'll leave it switched off. And then we're back to resolution. So that is it. That is a run through of the menu functions of the DOD LS475W. Is applicable to the Plus model as well. So the menu functions on the Plus model, the 475 Plus model, are essentially the same. Uh, the only difference between those two cameras basically is the Plus model has a CPL filter where you can't put a CPL on this camera and it has a 3 inch screen instead of the 2.7 you see on this so the plus model is a slightly bigger camera as well so uh, we will just go back and we will pop into record mode get the camera recording again and we will just power it off and let, there's the path analysis. Average speed, driving distance, and driving time. So if you got that path analysis switched on, that's what you'll get at the end, just to show how long you're driving for and what your average speed was. And the distance, of course. So that's it. A look at the menu functions of the DOD LS475W. And this is Chris from dashcamscentral.com.au.